Well, there was one brief shining moment uh, when I was growing up as a kid where uh, progress meant things like going faster, higher, and further rather than going backwards and checking people's skin color and trying to determine whether or not they were qualified for a job. Uh, we've talked a few about um, some of these scrappy startup companies. Uh, one of them would be SpaceX, which has managed to do rather well for itself. We did a show on a company called Anduril, kind of a mom and pop defense uh, program that started not too long ago. And uh, today I'd like to talk about a company called Boom Aerospace. Uh, and I'm Bill Whittle. Hi, everybody, with Steve Green and Scott Ott. Boom Aerospace is a privately funded aerospace company that is determined to build another SST, supersonic transport. We've come a long way since the, um, well, I guess, Concorde was probably designed in the 70s, I would say, mm. somewhere along there. Um, the problem with supersonic transport, they're, they're very nice going over the ocean, but they are expensive. And obviously, most of the flights that most people take are domestic flights. And you just can't have that thunderclap just scaring the cattle every, you know, seven or eight <laughs> minutes as these, as these supersonic aircraft go flying over the country. Boom has been able to use some very advanced aerodynamics to take the uh, sonic boom down to a sonic thud, something that's probably manageable. But they're running into um, a problem, and it's a political problem. Hmm. And I want to read to you a statement from, um, from the president of Boom Aerospace, the founder, because to me, this is exactly what the future used to sound like. And forgive me for giving this to you in full, but it really merits it before we start talking about it. Founder of the company seeking to build a successor to Concord has hit back at what he called flight shaming activists who are demanding an end to mass air travel. Blake Scholl of Boom Aerospace said that the demand to cut back on flights for the sake of limiting CO2 emissions is, quote, depressing, unquote. He said, there are some people who look at this and say, well, I guess we should have less things. We should use less energy. We should go to fewer places. It's been a lot of virtue signaling and it's very depressing. He went on to say, I believe in a future of abundance. I believe the North Star is human flourishing and that we should build a future in which more people can go more places more often. Mr. Scholl, who spoke at last month's Farnborough International Air Show, where Boom unveiled the cockpit for its proposed 64-seat, 1,300-mile-per-hour overture jet, accompanied by four former Concorde pilots, argues that the so-called flight shamers are ultimately seeking to stifle human progress. It's about as well put as I can say it. Yeah. Um, Steve, the flight shamers are, are related to uh, the Just Stop Oil people who sit down on a bridge and uh, make sure nobody gets to work and who deface Vincent van Gogh paintings in the Louvre uh, in order to stop uh, oil because of the, uh, the fact that the Earth's only got a few minutes left to live. Um, just in terms of just the general outlook of we should be doing bigger things, faster things, greater things, more impressive things, things that expand the human experience. Instead of taking five hours to fly from Los Angeles to New York, it'd be nice to do it in two hours and 15 minutes. Do you think that this guy is an anachronism or, or do you feel as I do that people are starting to, are starting to wake up to this whole woke thing and their gigantic lever, which is their, in, which is their entire power source of climate change and beginning to feel like, you know what? I, I, I don't think I like this, this Kamala Harris campaign idea of we all have to sit around and freeze in the darkness. I kind of like this Donald Trump idea that, 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 we're limited by our own imagination and our hard work. Yeah, I could definitely do 90 minutes from New York to Paris, although I don't think I look good in spandex. <laughs> so I'm going to skip the spandex jacket. <laughs> Everyone else can have them if uh, if they like. This is exciting stuff. This is this is dreamers. This is, you know, uh, one of my, uh, I don't want to say regrets, but one of the things I, I guess I miss really is as a country and as a world, we've grown so rich and the technology has gotten so advanced. These are great things, by the way, that uh, it's almost impossible now for, for two guys to start the next great thing in their parents' garage. You know, it, 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 it's going to take some massive investment. It's going to take a huge team of engineers and all the rest. But you'll look at the results and it's a company based out of nowhere, Colorado. I can't remember where in Colorado they are, but yep, they're right here in my home state. Um, Coming up with a supersonic transport to replace the Concorde, which, by the way, one of the reasons the Concorde was uh, uh, so iffy financially, it was it was a government project. It was an it was a, a fr- Anglo-French French, British, project, yep. and 
yeah, that, that, that thing never made any money. Well, here's a guy saying, I'm going to figure out how to get people between New York and Paris in just over mm. two hours, and it's not going to be a government project. I'm going to make money doing this. That is America, baby. And the fact that he sees that dream, not just ju- not just for himself and not just for his, I'm sure, wealthy first-class passengers that can afford one of 64 seats in this very high-tech jet, he is trying to figure out how to expand that to everybody. He says he exactly. wants to expand the human experience. He didn't say, I want to serve uh, you know, champagne and caviar to first-class passengers on that, on that flight. He said, I want to expand the human experience. That is... That, to me, is just so American that it that matters, Bill. That matters more than whether or not Boom succeeds or fails as a business, or even whether they get a single passenger jet from New York to Paris. It's, it's the dream that matters. It's the pursuit of happiness that matters, and Boom's pursuing it on behalf of all of us. They are, and they're doing it the right way, Scott, which is kind of my question for you. Um, As a person who's been involved with experimental aviation for the last 30 years of his life, I have seen some astonishing aircraft designs that consisted of uh, very, very attractive uh, CG renderings of this object in flight and then what it's going to do and so on, and it's it's just vaporware. They they, they just never built it. Um, Boom, on the other hand, has built a flying first prototype. And just to give you one small example of the reason that Boom is succeeding, they're succeeding for the same reason that SpaceX is succeeding and they're doing, and that's because of iterative design. So in other words, while they were working on their first flying prototype, they built a prototype that was not gonna fly. And you would think, well, why would you go to all the trouble to build a prototype if it's not even gonna fly? And their answer was, since we're still working on getting the aerodynamics right of the one that's gonna fly, we're gonna build this so we can get the landing gear correct. I thought, well, isn't that a, a, a novel way of, of doing things? So instead of coming out of the barn with this airplane with 16 new technologies, none of which have ever been tried before, all of which must work together, they are iteratively building this thing step by step. So they're capable of doing, there's no question about it. I've seen their flying prototype. They can do it. And it's not just nuts and bolts. There's some advanced aerodynamics there to reduce that that um, shock. Do you think, though, that, that as I do, that society, if given a choice between a bright future of abundance and a, and a, and a, a dim, dismal future of, of, you know, of less and less and less, will pick abundance? Or do you think that this brainwashing has gone so deep that, that people just expect that, that, that this is the natural order of things that we must all do less and less? People say what they believe, but people do what they actually mean. And uh, by that, I mean that as these so-called uh, environmental protesters are complaining about progress, um, the FAA is serving some 45,000 flights a, a day. At peak operational times, there are some 5,400 planes in the air over the United States at once. Some 2.9 million passengers a day are moving all around this country. We're not going backward from that. We're only going forward. And anybody who's used that system, as miraculous as it is, and if you had told my grandfather when he took his first little flight where I think he paid 2 or $3 to some guy who was traveling through town with an airplane so that he could go up for a ride, uh, if you told him at that time, oh, that thing you just did where basically you were the only thing in the air over Philadelphia at that moment, <laughs> well, someday there'll be hundreds of planes in the air over the Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey area, um, he would have not believed you. It would have been phenomenal to him. And that is that is the direction that things go. While you were looking at this Boom Aerospace thing this week, I saw a company, I think they're called Skyrise, that is developing software to make it possible for more people to fly helicopters and to more safely fly airplanes. And they went through this description of how complicated it is to fly both of those, uh, but especially with helicopters, how, you know, you're basically using both hands and both feet and you've got, you know, dozens of gauges and switches and all these things that you have to monitor. And so they wanted to make it. Uh, it, it, I didn't think of it till later, but I was like, holy cow, we put a 15-year-old kid in a car 
that can go 80 miles an hour. <laughs> And we let him loose on the highways, but you have to have hundreds of hours of practice in order to fly a helicopter. Um, this is this is the trajectory of civilization. It's ha not just how can we go faster and higher um, and 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 be more impressive, but it is there are places we want to see. There are people we want to embrace. There are deals we want to make. Um, there is there are areas of the world that we want to explore. And anything that can get us there faster, sooner, more efficiently, more comfortably, we're in favor of. So don't believe the naysayers and the protesters who've managed to find a way uh, to build a megaphone because they'll never build anything else. Hey, Bill, can I throw in one, one thing please, real quick? Please, Scott course, talked about this, this process of civilization and how we get bigger and more and wealthier and awesomer, and I love it. He's absolutely right. But the reason these, these stop oil people attack works of art isn't because they're pro-Earth. It's because they're anti-civilization. That's right. Yeah, and their and they're attention, uh, let's just say junkies. Um we talked, I, th I think it was on the show we did about Anduril, where they said in order that they, they um, needed people to lay up the materials and they didn't have as many skilled people as they wanted to. So they went down to the local community college, put a course in there for how to lay up carbon fiber. And anybody who graduated that course, they hired immediately. Hmm. Um, the, the future of things like boom is going to be depend on whether people vote boom out of business or or allow them to continue. Their problems now are not technological problems. As they say, their problems are cultural and, and that re will re result in political problems. The FAA can simply say, we're not gonna allow supersonic flights because it's bad for the environment. I think the answer is a, lies in something much broader than this. And I think the answer really lies in, no one has ever approached uh, Gen Z with a vision of the future that's better than, than the past. This is the this is the, the thing you hear most from from Gen Z is that they know their world is going to be smaller than their their parents world and their grandparents world. They don't like it. No one's ever gone to them and said, um, you will be able to do things that your grandparents haven't done or your parents haven't done. All they ever hear is you'll never be able to do things that your grandparents have done. That's what I would do in a situation like this. I would launch uh, uh, not just for boom. I mean, just in general, I would I would be concentrating highly on the fact that when you look at the uh, SpaceX launches, the guys behind the consoles are millennials, the, the, the exclusively millennials behind the, the launch consoles of, of SpaceX. I think SpaceX alone, just the presence of SpaceX is an enormous, enormous, almost incalculable um, investment on the vision of the future. And I think you can make things like this fun and sexy, but but somebody's going to have to make it fun and sexy. And and I will say this about uh, Blake Scholl: what he basically said in that in that block quote I read is the living definition of the fork in the road that that we face as as a nation and as a as a species. We really do have to decide to go forward or backward. Uh, I'll just leave you with this: there was. Uh, Florida is famous for having, at least was famous, for having a tourist attraction every 14 miles down the Florida Turnpike. There was just, you know, it was, a, you know, a Gator Farm or it was the House of Weirdness or it was it. <laughs> That's the whole state. <laughs> One of them was the uh, prototype of the Boeing SST, which preceded the Concorde and was far more uh, uh effective in the Concorde, carried a lot more passengers, was practically twice the size, it would have been a lot more economical. And it was canceled due to environmental reasons. And the one thing I remember about visiting the SST there was listening to my dad look at this thing and say, you know, Bill, we're either going forwards or we're going backwards and that's all there is to it. And, and when they canceled that, we were going backwards. I feel like we've been going backwards since then. Time to go forwards again. This is the only advantage that America has is this ability to dream of something, put together a little investment money, build a working prototype, get more investment money, and then actually make it happen. Elon Musk has shown the way. 
and other companies are doing this and we need to get the government out of their way and in order to do that you have to vote for people who want less government when november rolls around instead of just sitting at home and maybe lamenting the fact that you don't like the way this guy's hairstyle is or or you don't particularly like his tweets i'm betting on the future i still am uh, and i guess i always will for steve green and scott Ott, i'm bill whittle thanks for joining us we'll see you next time on writing